Hello and welcome to another webinar in the Inspire Hackathon series. Uh, today we are going to talk about weather and climate, hopefully, and see how we can uh, improve our weather forecast with deep learning, so modern technology. It's very exciting. It's uh, and, and very important for the agricultural sector. My name is Bente Liliabi. I'm going to be your host today. And uh, with me, I have a panel of two or three <laughs> speakers. We have some um, uh, connection issues with Africa. Well, hopefully we will uh, be able to enjoy all the speakers today. Um, before uh, before we really start, and this is the signature of uh, my webinars, we do a weather report. So very appropriate for the topic of the webinar. Also, we do weather reports today, and we start with the uh, the panel here. But we really want to hear from you as well. So if you can use the chat box and let us know what the weather is like where you are, and then obviously tell us where you are, that will be awesome. But you will see, you will learn about our weather reports first. So, um, Amit, can you tell us where you are and what the weather is like? Yeah, hello, I'm uh, Amit. I'm from uh, Leipzig in Germany. And currently the weather is uh, there is 18 degrees Celsius and it's a bit uh, cloudy. Nice, nicely and springy. Nice and springy. Okay, and Andre, where are you and what's the weather like? Hello, I'm Andre, and I'm from Czech Republic, uh, especially in from Pilsen. And the uh, weather is pretty much same as from in Emmet. Uh, little cloudy and approximately 15, 15 Celsius. Nice spring weather in yeah. Pilsen as well. Yeah. And Samuel, I'm not sure if we can hear you. No, we cannot hear Samuel, but Samuel, maybe you can do the weather report in the chat box for us. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll see what we can do with uh, the voice of, uh, of Samuel later. Meanwhile, I'll tell you about the weather where I am. I'm just northwest of Oslo, and the weather today is also a very nice spring weather. It's um, partly overcast, some sun and some clouds. Uh, the temperature is around 15 degrees as well. So we have a lovely spring weather and i see um finland is here cloudy and chilly okay so you got the cold before us tula <laughs> we are expecting the colder weather <laughs> uh thessaloniki 18 degrees also it's warming up there as well um and uh, samuel is telling us uh, that is cloudy and the it's they have the rainfall season which is very different from where i am in scandinavia Anyways, nice to hear from you uh, and let us know more weather reports. And the chat box is actually where we want you to ask questions and comment on the presentations that you get here. So we really want you to uh, engage with us. If you have a uh, Chrome browser, if you have a webcam, if you have a headset, and a good internet connection. We might also be able to invite you into the room if we want to um, um, speak, ask questions and comment inside the webinar room. But then, you, and then you, in order to do that, you can raise your hand. You see that on um, the right-hand side of your screen. So uh, this webinar, we expect to last about one hour, uh, depending on how active you are. We will start to be uh, to get introduced to uh, weather forecasts, and then we will learn about deep learning, and uh, hopefully we will be able to then expand the weather forecast over 30 years definition of what a climate is and learn about climate and particularly U Uganda from climate trends. Sorry, so time series. Uh, um, in Uganda with Samuel. We will see how it goes. But that's the plan for today. And uh, I think, yeah, that we will do a tour de table also so that the presenters will say a few words about themselves before we actually start with the presentation. So, presentation. Amit. Yes. Yes. Uh, I am a, I am a research associate at uh, Institute of Applied Informatics, INFI, in Leipzig. I work on the Horizon 2020 Stargate project, 
to where I focus on climatic data analysis and data integration for smart agriculture. Hmm. Very nice. And Andre? Uh, I'm from, uh, well, actually, I'm currently studying the PhD at the University of West Bohemia in topic of clustering, as well as I have some uh, well, experience with machine learning in some companies and as well as developer of some well, true developer of some IoT technologies. <laughs> so uh, deep technology, <laughs> if that's an expression. Technical and, <laughs> yes. OK. Uh, and Samuel, you see, you see, it will be very lively in this room today. <laughs> uh, we hope that it will uh, fix the uh, itself somehow miraculously and that you will learn about Samuel as well. So, but before that, uh, we will see how it goes. I think we are ready to learn about um, the weather and how you are dealing with that, Amit. Yes, so uh, let's share the screen. Yes. We'll turn off our cameras and, uh, and feel free to ask questions. We will have some questions in between if you have somebody, uh, some questions, and then um, afterwards there will be a uh, Q and A after all the presentations. Okay, so Pente, you asked about how is the weather now, and we are interesting uh, also. Uh, what will be the weather tomorrow or in a few days? This is important in many levels. For from personal level, can I walk afterwards outside or through agriculture, electrical power generation to disease prediction? So weather forecasting, what is it? It can be defined as the prediction of the atmosphere at a particular place and time. This means prediction of various variables like temperature, precipitation, wind speed and direction, air pressure, etc. So what are the basic steps of forecasting weather? The first step of forecasting the future is to understand what is happening now. Uh, to do that, meteorological variables are measured by various instruments like surface stations, ships, weather balloons, satellites, and they form a global observing system. To give a rough idea about the distribution of meteorological instruments, there are about 11,000 stations worldwide, and they are the backbone of uh, surface-based measure, measurements. Uh, the stations make observation at least once every three hours and often hourly of air temperature, atmospheric pressure, uh, wind, humidity. Over the oceans, there are around 4,000 observing ships. Uh, 10,000 of them report observation daily. They include the same data as uh, the land stations. And in addition, sea surface uh, temperature, wavelengths, uh, and period. Uh, actually, currently, the vast majority of observations today come from weather satellites. They provide different types of imagery, visible infrared and water vapor imagery. And even images are interpreted to derive uh, meteorological parameters. These uh, data, there are many sources of data and each of them has its own time series. They are also noisy and uh, must be combined into a continuous and smooth format, which can be used by a model. Uh, this process is called data assimilation. It provides the model at its initial state. The forecast itself is done by a numerical model of uh, the atmosphere, which solves differential equations of fluid dynamics and calculate the successive states to project itself into time. So if we have the, we have analyzed the current, the current state of the atmosphere, we apply the equations to get the next step. And this is now our current step. We apply again to get the next step in a, uh, the next two time steps. How it is done, actually, 
the atmosphere is represent, uh, represented as the discrete form of uh, in discrete form as a three-dimensional grid where the elements that compose the model are specified for each block at a given instant of time. So forecasting for the next time step, which means for the next few, few minutes, means applying the equations for each block. Uh, these equations are not solved independently and the values in neighboring blocks should also be taken into account. Forecasting models have a few million blocks with 10 variables per block. This means that to produce forecast for a single hour, the model has to solve more than 100 million complex equations. Uh, this requires efficient algorithms and usage of supercomputers. Um, numerical models, weather has their limitations. Uh, first models are approximations. They are not precise because weather processes are not fully understood. Uh, processes are too complex to model with current computing power. Measurements of error and initial state may not be completely known due to lack of observation station. So already in the 1990s, researchers began to understand that there is no perfect model with complexity close to the one of the real world. And the alternative is to use different forecast scenarios in ensemble. Each scenario is an ensemble member, which consists slightly different configuration of initial state or the prediction system itself. And this enables to convey the predictability uh, for the, of the weather for the, that time point. And indeed, with the improvement of the models and computation power and sample models have improved by about one and a half days per decade. So five day forecasts in 2017 are as adequate as three days forecasts were in 2001. This represents a predictability gain of about two days over a 16 year period. But ensemble me member methods are also uh, have their limitations. They are finite. They typically employ five to 50 members. This means that the raw ensemble output does not provide the full range of possibilities for very fine weather. There are still subgrid processes which they don't catch. And there are extreme phenomena which are not modeled well. So what is there, is there an answer? So the next step can be machine learning, or deep learning, machine learning in general. It is uh, defined as the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. And in case of uh, weather forecasting, it means using historical observed data to learn weather patterns without using explicitly the physical theory. And about this topic, André will talk. So thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, um, Amit. A very clear and uh, understandable presentation of uh, weather forecast. Excellent. Uh, do you have any questions uh, about the weather forecast? Please ask in the chat. Yes, we have Hamad. How many weather stations data are required to cover a city? Do you know that, Amit? Oh, I will uh, I'll look at it because some stations, there might be some stations in a city. Mm. And in addition, there are satellites. So it, uh, it, it depends. Uh, it depends very much. So it, there it, is it depends where you are also because yeah. there are there were, as, as I uh, shown, not all the, not all parts of the world are covered uh, evenly. So Europe is very dense and mm -hmm. some places in Central Asia are not so, not so covered. So it depends where, uh, which city. In which city, yes. So the, the answer, Hamad, is it depends. <laughs> 
Well, um, Tula is asking, how is the models taking into account the climate change and the warming, or do they take that into account? That's a big question. <laughs> Yeah, so first, uh, there is a difference between weather and climate. Mm. Uh, weather forecasting is for a relatively short period, uh, like, and climate should, climate forecasting should take this into, into account. Sorry. Um, if you, if you use historical data, then you should take, so models should have some, uh, some usage of uh, the climate uh, changing, but this is already application because weather forecasting per se mm. is uh, in a limited in a li limited space and time. Yes, so the weather forecast is of course into the future, and then you have the real weather, which will then uh, you know will be forming the basis for the climate yes. um, analysis or the definition. Well, yeah, the definition of climate in the sense that it's. Uh, you add all this real weather incidents into the climate that defines the climate. And just to say that as a reminder, the definition of climate versus weather is that the climate is over a 30 year period, right? That's the normal definition of climate. Am I correct? This Still. Um, Stefano, are you using H, what, what, HPC? And if so, how? I don't know what HPC is. Do you, <laughs> Hamid? Uh, where is it? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Hamad, uh, no, um, uh, Stefano is asking this question. Uh, is It's in the middle of the... Oh, yes, 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 I see it. Um, I'm talking about, okay, HPC. I will I will ask answer about it <laughs> later because I'm yes. not sure what it is. Yes, okay, so we will take that question later. Um, so um, let's see, what is the spatial resolution of the model you are using and are you applying any downscaling? Uh, so uh, uh, I, talk, I talked about general, general weather forecasting, so there are different uh, types of uh, resolutions. There are global resolutions which are up to 100 kilometers and mesoscale which are few kilometers and until uh, like uh, 20 30 kilometers so it's uh, i didn't talk about a, per, a, a specific model that i use but in, in general but i think i think this can be we will come back to the rest of the questions uh and at towards the ends but i think because i think this is a nice um segue over to andre because the resolution of the weather forecast is what we intend to improve yeah, right to have a higher resolution yes so i think uh andre you can talk about that um and i give the floor to you um, you can tell you can introduce us first to a technology so the deep learning and um and yeah, uh, yeah. actually we're gonna uh, try the improvement the local weather forecast with uh, deep learning techniques and methodologies mm. and we're gonna look at it and uh, as a time series so that's that's the main point and with it we try to enhance the global weather uh, data around the same era so mm. and yes. that's the point of the uh, challenge three in, in spark hackathon Exactly. So this was my point <laughs> that we are naturally turning over to that and naturally turning over to you, your presentation, Andre, because we will learn now um, how we can use deep learning to um, get more detailed weather forecasts, more local weather forecasts. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to switch to my presentation. Yeah. And we turn off our cameras. Samuel also. I'm ready to go. Yes. All right. So he hello, everyone. Uh, welcome again. Uh, who just connected yet? My name is Andre Kass, and in following couple of minutes, I'm going to walk through 
some of the techniques which we are going to adopt in our Dubrovnik Inspire Hackathon, especially in Challenge 3, uh, deep learning for the weather forecast. Along with me, there are also Michal Kepka, who can participate in a later discussion. So let's jump into the definition of our problem. Uh, our topic aims to weather forecast, which are in general and from our point of view, the prediction of chaotic systems. So that means that small error in initial condition of forecast increased and affect predictability. The situation is very complicated, as Emmett said in previous presentation. On the other hand, we live in a century of cheap and quite precise IoT weather stations or sensors, which can bring, bring us tons of required data from the ground. So in our uh, challenge dream, uh, uh, in Sparkaton, we are going to combine global weather data with IoT, with unit sensors together, along with reducing our forecast uh, case into a small area, approximately one kilometer square. Uh, in other words, uh, with the local measurement weather properties from sensors, we want to enhance our global weather forecast in same area with machine learning. So we have two bundles of geolocated time series from 2016 to 2019. Uh, the key difference are in density and measured features. Local sensors have uh, 50 to 100 uh, meters gaps and were measured roughly every two hours. Into the list of the measured values applies the soil uh, temperature, water potential, and volumetric water content. The second one, global weather data, is measured for square uh, three times three kilometers, approximately every one hour, and contains several uh, features such as also the temperature, humidity, potential evaporation, or surface solar, solar radiation. As you can see, the measured characteristics have some level of correlation such as we, uh, we have humidity measurement in both data sets. Uh, that's uh, what we have to do is uh, match these two data sets into one comprehensive data set, which will be used for our next machine learning step. This process will include uh, basic statistical analysis, such as calculation of Pearson correlation coefficient, divergence, and entropy to better feel about the data and probability. In other words, see some hidden patterns between them. Then uh, we will come uh, the time series matching because they have a different frequency. Uh, there are several approaches can be taken in account uh, in a respect of full machine learning but the most used is dynamic time warping, which tries to persist the uh, time series peaks and dropouts, as you can see in the picture, where we have uh, two time series, red and blue, with a little bit of shifted function. Uh, the gray lines show the time point matching between them. So now we have, uh, we know how to match our data set into one, and we have some basic feel about our data, which means the statistical statistics. Then comes the extraction uh, of key features. In other words, uh, feature reduction. We can easily say that not all measured, measured characteristics are equal or would have a significant impact on the total forecast. For such cases, we want to use autoencoders, which is a specific type of unsupervised feed-forward neural network. The primary purpose of this network is to encode the raw input vector into some embedded one. They call it a code vector. Uh, Autoencoders then try to reconstruct the original input vector from the created code vector and see how they are similar. So in other words, the code vector 
should contain uh, all the vital information from our data. And of course, there is a positive side effect. It uh, increased the, uh, sorry, decreased the further processing time. So finally, uh, with the code vector, we can uh, go into our uh, forecasting itself, which uh, is in general very wide topic. And there is variety approaches that we can use. And here are the more valuable opportunities for uh, for our participate colleagues in our hackathon. Nevertheless, we want to, in the beginning, try to do the most used one recurrent neural network called short term memory. It is specially designed to overcome the gradient descent problems in contrast with other networks, which is what we want for time series. Uh, we also have some backup networks, such as radial buzzing function, Bayesian neural network, or just a traditional RNet with completely different philosophy. Uh, of course, there are some traditional approaches based on autoregressive models, such as autoregressive integrated movement average widely used in stock market prediction. So you will see if, if it takes uh, some enhancement also in weather forecast. So uh, now we know what our data looks like and what we want to do with them. The last question is how and where. We already set up our high-end research cluster with two dedicated GPUs, which will be provided for partic participants of our challenge. And we are going to develop primary in Python, but it's not uh, restrictive with, uh, so in Jupyter Notebook, supported by Anaconda environment, which provides great frameworks such as TensorFlow and Keras. So that's all from my side. So thank you for uh, your attention. And I will put the link in the webinars chat. So. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Andre. And I think uh, Hannah beat you to it, uh, if you're oh, referring to the, <laughs> the description. <okay. laughs> so look at Hannah's um, uh, message. That's why in the we are in same team. Yes, yes. So that's where you can, if you look at uh, Hannah's uh, comment here, you will see that uh, she has uh, provided a link to a description uh, of the challenge that nice. Andre presented. And uh, I also asked you um, in the poll what kind of background you, you all have. Um, so some of you might come from the weather forecasting, have some knowledge about that, some from deep learning on the, or other technique, um, so ICT technology, and, and climate, uh, climate issues. Or neither, I, that's my fourth option for you, neither, uh, but you are interested in learning. And I think this will be helpful for you uh, in this challenge to know what type of background uh, people have. And, um, but uh, yeah, so that's the purpose of that small poll. I think we can go to ask, uh, to have a, a discussion before we start with um, the climate issue with Samuel, crossing fingers that we will not enter two big technical problems with you, Samuel. Um, so first, uh, I see that, thank you so much for the questions. I see that there are many questions here. And uh, let's start uh, to, with those. Um, we haven't answered. So it was uh, the, uh, did, did you notice what it was, um, Amit? Um, high performance computing was the HP. Yes, yes. So I still am not sure, but the, the, the what, um, whether uh, national meteorolo meteorology uh, centers use supercomputers, which are like uh, amazingly, uh, strong so mm -hmm. i hope that this is the the answer for uh, stefano's uh, uh, 
questions. I myself, uh, I cannot say that I use it because I'm, I'm also from Andrew, uh, Andre's side, I'm with the machine learning. Yes. Okay. So um, we don't know, and I, I'm trying to think what I've heard, um, but um, I cannot say that on the top of my head. If anybody knows, please let us uh, know in the chat. Okay, so um, the resolution we have talked about. Um, and the question from Antoine Cantiza, the weather prediction is based on the past data and how to forecast the upcoming climate change. Uh, so, it, uh, yeah. Uh, we so yes the the weather prediction takes into account uh, uh, previous predictions and the current model and creates a, a new a new forecast with the with this data. It, uh, this is also part of the data assimilation uh, to combine the previous forecast and the current state with the so about climate change if this is this is depends on the application if you want to uh, to apply it uh, for uh, agriculture then you have to uh, realize 10 years ago uh, mm -hmm. so if you want to uh, to have an already a knowledge in advance how is the climate and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, take it as a, a priori knowledge but mm -hmm. th this is a something uh, which is a disadvantage and when using uh, ob observation and machine learning this can be um, solved because More you, don't, you, yeah, you don't take things uh, in, a, in advance as a, a priori you, take, you look at the data and uh, use this observation yeah. Yeah. So generally, when you, whenever you have a model, but once you get the data, that's why you know Earth observations of any type is very important because that's where you improve your models. That that's that's sort of yeah. the correct answer <laughs> comes with the data. Yeah. Actually, usually you take the eight percent of your past data, mm -hmm. and the rest of the twenty percent you just uh, use it as a validation of your model prediction, and then, mm -hmm. then you go. Uh, more food for the for prediction right yeah so it's a mix uh okay so let's see um i hope that enlightens something uh somewhat antoine uh felix uh what are the some of the advanced technology used in weather forecasting just having a yeah he, he's just uh, curious to know from you in the panel uh, wait, wait, I'm looking for um, so I think that uh, satellite imagery has uh, gone a long way from uh, from the beginning. It's uh, like I read uh, several uh, estimations. It's, it's uh, eight, let's say eighty five percent can some some say of the observation taken from them, and they provide uh, many observation per day and uh, also from places which were not mapped before. Mm. Uh, so I think this is this is a big uh, advance advancement in the technology which is used and every every year there are more observation using uh, these imagery. Yeah. Any other technology that uh... um, that comes to my mind I if I will think about it, and if I will think about it, yes. How about you, Andre? Well, actually, in these times, we are in a huge boom of the uh, computers. So I, I think the advanced technology for us is the computers itself. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, computation power. Yeah, yeah cloud computing, perhaps. Yeah, uh, can be. Um... Yeah. So, um, so we. Uh, I hope that you got some answer there, Felix. Uh, Kevin, is it possible to plan an automated automated irrigation based on weather forecast and soil moisture sensor? To what percentage could? 
be the precision for irrigation? This is a very, uh, very good question and highly relevant for agriculture. So have you any thoughts on this? Yeah, I think that it can be uh, can be planned and uh, I think that there are all, already some uh, uh, field uh, fields and different scales that are uh, measure measuring uh, the weather with sensors and with uh, the data which comes from uh, forecasts uh, and according to this measure also the humidity and different the di different uh, uh, parameters which are relevant to uh, agriculture and according to this uh, to the irrigation um, of, of fields uh, so yeah this is this is possible and, yeah. and, it, and it is done also it's not uh, theoretically no, I, but I, I, I suppose that uh, the, the question is, is already done, but what with more precise weather forecasts or more higher resolution of the forecast, you can improve. Yes, if, yeah, if you have field sensors and uh, sensors on, the, on your vehicles, on tractors, mm. which can um, uh, measure the exact um, conditions at that time, at that place, which cannot be uh, achieved by other other means because they are uh, the current forecast have the, the the limitation of the grid and this if you mm. get sub grid information then you can improve your uh, your uh, own fields irrigation or in, in general the data that you get up on your uh, on your field on your field yeah so the of course the, the feel the the soil moisture also we have satellites that measure soil moisture and um uh, but the 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 resolution of these measurements is of yes. course uh, limited when it comes to satellites but this is the combination of local observations with sensors like uh, mm -hmm. you, you described and then we can optimize these new technologies to then say water for instance you know um have the right amount of water depending on where you are on the field i yes, guess that's, field. Mm -hmm. yeah. so um and i saw one more question um stefano some yeah this is a comment i think some technology use of uh copernicus and artificial intelligence and a high performance computing is that a question or a comment, Stefano? Maybe you will uh, make that more precise. Uh, I see that I, I, I think I will take the risk of inviting Hamad. He has raised his hand. So let's see what Hamad wants. So I invite you, Hamad. Now you got a link, you got an invitation in your email box. And uh, if you have the right technology up set up, you will be able to join us. Um, let's see if I did you see any other questions that I somehow missed? Yeah, can you use data from smartphone sensors? Dimitros is asking. Actually, that would be interesting, but uh, I'm sure that that must, must be well some policy restriction that someone provides our data to someone else. I think yes. it's about situation that uh, some citizen in in the city will take the mobile phone to measure measure temperature uh, in in streets. So that would be maybe some. It's possible. Yes, some but... some uh, uh, solutions are not applied not because they are. Uh, the technology doesn't exist, but because of uh, privacy issues and uh... yeah. So uh, actually, uh, there's in in this hackathons there we are addressing citizen science data and how to make citizen science data available. So to you know so that we can uh, process it together with other types of data, so authoritative data. Uh, it, it's uh, so, so we, it's done a lot of work on that. Uh, I th think since Hannah, you are here, maybe you will help me and uh, send some uh, 
provide the links to those challenges in the Dubrovnik uh, Inspire Hackathon, because that could be a very good uh, combination, actually, if there are some data from citizen science that you can in integrate and test with in this challenge. That could be interesting. Um, I don't know if you're prepared to do that. I mean, would that be possible in the frame of this challenge, Andre? Do you think so? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and in, in addition to what we are doing in these hackathons, uh, there is also now in in connection with the uh, Earth Day was uh, on the 22nd of April. It's the 50 year anniversary of the Earth Day, which is a global celebration of Earth, if you say uh, if you like. And um, they are, you know, uh, the group on Earth Observation was just uh, launching this uh, or cooperating on this humongous um, effort to collect citizen science data from around the world. So there, there are several initiatives related to collect sit using my mobile app, app is a, a very frequently used for that. So that's why I'm, I'm mentioning that. So it might be some information coming in, in the near future. It would be nice to do this in this uh, challenge to have some testing of it and see how you can combine it with deep learning in, in this particular context for agriculture. Um, let's see. Um, I see Hamad, you are in here. Welcome to the room. Um, do you know how to turn on your microphone and the camera? Um, there are some buttons that you need to click on. This is always exciting to see. With technology, we are discussing modern technology and we are using it, <laughs> but sometimes it's not straightforward. So, um, I don't see that you are. Yes, your microphone is on, Hamad. Can you hear us? Yes, yes, I am listening. Okay, good. Actually, actually, I am working on GIS, and my main subjects are soil science. So, because I am working on GIS, GIS and remote sensing are the techniques which works on spatial variability. That's why I, I am asking question. I think one weather station for one city is not enough. That will not cover whole no, no, the city. It's, no, it's, it, it's not enough, uh, but sometimes there aren't any at all for the city. So you, you should combine from, uh, uh, if you are in some place where there is a, many, uh, many stations, then you can use the overlap, uh, the overlap of, there is more, more overlap on the stations. And if there is a place where it is not mapped enough, then you should use many, many stations to get, to get the same data. This is what I mean. Okay, uh, we are actually using Landsat 8 image data which is freely available from Earth Explorer. And we can use that land uh, satellite data to predict soil moisture content. So, I, um, so from that satellite data, you can predict soil moisture content, soil vegetation index like that. Mm -hmm. Can you say, can you uh, post the uh the name of the tool in the chat box, please. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so the, the, that's an interesting piece of information. So, if you can provide that in the chat box, that would be uh, helpful. And then we can rec if you have not registered for the challenge yet. Uh, it sounds like this might be something interesting for you to join this team. Yes, I think so. Um, uh, we need to move on. Uh, let me see. Uh, yes, so thank you so much for, for joining us, Hamad. I will excuse you from the room. Okay, and I'm listening. I'm typing. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
and what did I do? Uh, something happened. Are you there? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> Good. And then with Samuel, so suddenly I was going to give the floor to Samuel now, but uh, apparently that um, chat is disabled. Oh, something happened, I think. Um, yeah. Mm. Let's see. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think uh, still all right. Let's see. I, sorry for this. I'll uh, just set. Uh, uh, see if I can get the chat to work again because apparently the chat was disappearing. Is it disappeared for you guys to hear uh, Amit and uh, I see, Andre? I see the chat. Okay, you see the chat. Yeah. And. Yes, we test yeah. and welcome. So it seems to be working. So Ahana, I think perhaps well, some you need to reboot. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hana can well, Tula. If Tula is still here, can you please <laughs> write us a message a message in the in the chat? And because my I had a speaker that was um, asking for. To, to join us. Hmm. Well, sometimes technology is uh, have, has its mysterious ways. <laughs> so the we lost are. Samuel, yes. <laughs> and we lost Samuel. He was double. He was here twice. Uh, and that was for technical reasons. He was on the phone and on his computer. And uh, But I think when I exited, um, Chat enabled. Okay, good. So we have the chat is there. Fine. Um, then I, I we have to wait for Samuel to join us again. Uh, meanwhile, let's see if we can discuss more. Uh, raise your hand. We lost uh, something happened with the chat box. So I think I saw somebody else asking for the floor. Since we are waiting for Samuel to join us again, we will. Um, oh, Samuel is coming now. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, chat disabled and disabled. Oh, okay. Something to do with uh, Samuel coming in and out. Samuel, can you hear us? We would like to give the floor to you now and learn about the climate. So we have been discussing, you know, weather, weather forecast, weather and climate in the past and climate in the future. And uh, so now we are actually hoping to hear from uh, Samuel. I don't hear you, Samuel. Are you using your phone? There is some sort of sound, hello? but <laughs> hello. I don't hear. Uh, uh, I. Yes, I'm using my phone. Yes, now I'm we can hear you. I'm using my phone. Yes. Okay. So maybe what we can do, you can project the presentation, then I could go through each. I think that would be better now. Yes, but uh, unfortunately, I don't have your presentation. I sent it to a mail. I sent the presentation mm, I have been looking for it. Did you send it send it to my hotmail address? Oh, yes. <laughs> mm. 
I don't know if this will work. I we get a lot of back. Can you also try to send it to uh, to Hanka, perhaps, if you have her address, Samuel? Because uh, Hanka will then be able to send it to me. Sometimes, even though we normally get all emails, every now and then the system is eating our emails. It's not often, but sometimes it happens. <laughs> Uh, yes, so Samuel. Uh, I think we will. Yeah. Uh, I. The sound is not going to work if it's uh, not improving. So I think um, the topic is very interesting. So it's climatic so trends. I in, um, uh, on a use case uh, of uh, in Uganda. So that was uh, what Samuel was supposed to inform us about. But I suggest, Samuel, that you record locally a um, presentation of uh, your work uh, and the challenge, because there's a challenge where you can join Samuel as well. And... Uh, and then we can publish that um, video uh, so that you, with his slides. I think that's what we have to do. <laughs> because we have tested also so many times. The, the, the problem. The problem is also your sound, uh, unfortunately, Samuel, because it's breaking up and there's a lot of um, 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 audio back sound of some sort. That is because of the technology, not because of people behind you or anything. So it's just very hard to hear what you say. So I, rec I recommend that you record locally um, your presentation and then we can share it um with the audience and you can go to planforall.eu so planforall.eu and uh hanka thank you so much for providing all these links um you can see that in the chat box uh if you follow us on uh, plan for all on twitter or on facebook you will also be able to get all this information planforall.eu and also um um yes I think that's where we can uh, um, recommend people to go. Any final words um, here, um, Amit and Andre? I just catch some uh, questions in, in chat box, and one is from Amos. Yeah. Amos, sorry. And yes, we can provide some data sets. So. If you join uh, into our challenge, we can uh, we will create some welcome bundle for you guys. So mm. it contains the data set as well as notebook with basic loading and uh, plotting the graphs. So yes. Yeah. So uh, may I suggest that you, um, Andre, if you provide your email address directly in the chat, yeah, actually, uh, I think I can uh, send a um, link to our Skype conversation where we all will talk to, together. So yes, but that, not that's... everybody here on this. Uh, it's not sure that everybody here okay. is actually signed up for the maybe uh, for yeah. the hackathon yet. So for those who are uh, discovering this uh, excellent opportunity now, they can uh, contact you directly or go via the links that uh, Hanka Anna is uh, providing you in the chat. And so email is in, in the chat. Yes, thank you so much, Andre. Um, and did we, yeah, so meanwhile, where we were trying to address this technical problem, there might be some other questions. Um, Felix, can global warming cause cold weather? <laughs> that I don't know if, can you ask any, anyone uh, care to answer that? I'm not quite sure if this is our expertise, but. 
your audio, your mute, Amit, your mute. Yeah, maybe Samuel yeah. can uh, can be more informed about this. Oh, yeah, he's, well, he's not in, in the, no, not anymore. Uh, so I don't think we uh, we can answer that. So, so smartphone sensors. Um, let me see, Abu Bakr. I saw, yeah, so there's a speaker, Abu Bakr. Let's try and see if you can join us, Abu Bakr, since we have a little bit, a uh, few minutes left. And um, so we can see you can. So we invited. Uh, Abu Bakr. And meanwhile, we have a presentation from Samuel, but unfortunately, um, I think the sound is not going to work. So uh, I still um, we will send we will send the presentation if Samuel is able to record very quickly. We will send the presentations together with the replay that you will get in your inbox from this from this uh, webinar. We are recording the webinar. You will also be able to get the slides from the speakers uh, that will be published on planforall.eu. So you have plenty of uh, opportunities to um, to learn more about this. And okay, that's a. Uh, we are waiting for uh, Samuel is trying again. Abu Bakr. Um, um, so high performance computers are uh, computing our computer systems with huge computing and data storage capacities, for example. Your computer at home has two processors uh, and four GB gigabyte RAM and 500 gigabyte disk. And the high performance computers have more than thousands of processors, RAMs, and data storage in terabytes. I, so that's just a piece of information. Thank you, Abu Bakr. I don't know if you're on your way in here, <laughs> but we will see. Samuel, we see you are in the room, but if the sound is not improved, um, you can try to see if you're you can speak, but if if the sound is bad, I, I'm I'm afraid we have to do the recording with you, and um, and send that to this audience, so that they also learn about your challenge with this climatic trends, um, and particularly you would have some interesting to show for us in Uganda. That's all I know now, uh, but the the subject is of course very very interesting and linked to weather. So I see Samuel that you have turned on your microphone, but unfortunately we do not. Yeah. I sent you the presentation. I also shared it with the hand. So I don't know where you can access it now. <laughs> I think this will this scene here will go in one of those <laughs> when you make fun of all these online meetings. <laughs> all this strange way we are interacting. <laughs> uh, it's uh, almost two o'clock. Uh, we hear some life in Uganda, but unfortunately, I think we have to say thank you. We don't see you, Abu Bakr, either. So probably you have some technical problems as well. I thank you so much for your interest in, in this topic. Uh, please follow us on uh, Plan for All in um, in uh, on Twitter. Planforall.eu is where you can find a lot more information about both uh, these two challenges that we have. Well, one of them we presented, and then the other one you know of <laughs> in this uh, webinar. And um, and we, you learned also about citizen science. There's uh, also Internet of Things, which is about sensors. So there are more more challenges related to sensors that also could be relevant for this. Am I right, Andre? This could also be a good combo. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So plenty of interesting topics to address. 
the time is still not too late. The way that, yeah, just a few words of what is, this is a virtual hackathon. It's one of the, it, or several, is two of the Inspire uh, hackathons. And a virtual hackathon, how do you participate? You sign up for, you register for the, for the uh, challenge. Then the mentors, and here we have Andre as a mentor, uh, will contact you and ask a little bit more about your background. And then you will be able to communicate uh, via a Skype chat. And you also have a document, so, so Google Docs that you are working on. So that's where you can have the exchange of information. And Andre, you will call meetings, right? You will have a Skype chat, but also sometimes some meetings there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's how you work together. And you will, what's in it for you? Well, uh, you will be able to uh, potentially write articles. So the, the reporting, a part of this hackathon is reports. And uh, the reports is also the basis for the finals, where you have the final presentations together with all of the other challenges. We have, I think we have 12 challenges in Dubrovnik and uh, 10, 11, now I, I lost count <laughs> in the Kampala. So there's a lot of challenges and we will present them in two online workshops. The first one will be, the Kampala one will be already beginning of May, on the 6th of May. And the final workshop for Dubrovnik, so for your challenge here, um, Andre, on uh, deep learning for weather forecast, will be uh, mid-June, um, probably the 11th. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's locked, but that's what it looks like. Follow us on Twitter and look up. You know, there will be inf more information about this on planforall.eu. Um, yeah, so that's how you do it. We have also some slides on what it means, you know, so uh, to be um, participating in an online hackathon, uh, if that is helpful for you. And um, yeah, it's an open community. So you can join even though the group has started or the hackathon has started, it's always possible to join. Right, Andre? You're welcome, yeah. new participants. Yeah. Yeah. I will start with welcome pack and we will see how people can uh, participate. Yes. And I'm sure I'm speaking for Samuel as well, that uh, he is welcoming people to his challenge on climatic trends. So um, with that, I think we say goodbye and um, have a lovely, lovely weekend. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for hosting you. us. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.